I love being out on the road. And one of my favorite places to cruise in this great country of ours is out on the road in the west. Because out here, I have a chance to see desert reptiles in a more natural habitat, unlike the more humid conditions we get back where I live in good old Florida. Anyone who follows me knows I have quite a few sulcatas in my sanctuary, but they are nothing like the ones being raised here in Arizona at my good friend Bob Bloom's place. Out here, they get big. I mean, really big. And that means a lot of responsibility. You'll see what I mean. Hey, what's going on guys? We're really excited to bring you this episode. I'm back here in Arizona with Bob Blome at his amazing reptile ranch. So we're gonna spend today talking a little bit about sulcatas. We're gonna get into some lesser known facts about the tortoises, what it takes for him to have such a large collection out here in the deserts of Southern Arizona. So sit back, relax, and uh, we'll see you in just a little bit. A good portion of my life has been all about action which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Oh, we're going, all right, so. We, uh, these are your big ones that we're going into. And in fact, a couple years ago, I think a lot of people were psyched on the fact that I crawled into one of those uh, burrows. And you said that burrow got extremely large. It's gone now, huh? We had, I had to bury it in with the tractor. It, uh, that kept digging and digging and collapsed it. And it was actually under the road. Oh, So geez. eventually, and it actually took me all day to fill that hole in. Really? With the tractor? With that tractor right there. Yeah, so I had to think keep about pushing that. the dirt in and... <laughs> Here's yeah, so they now. can be fun. Well, you were just saying to me, like, you know, I just said I love sulcatas, but you're like, man, they can, they, I, some days you want to get rid of them. Some days you're just not happy because yeah. what happens is, like, right now in the breeding season, they will, males will push each other through the block wall. No way. And then all of a sudden you're looking out front and you see five or six tortoises walking around so then you have to walk 25 acres here and try to find the ones that it got out and yeah. sometimes it takes a day or two they always seem to migrate toward the house but every once in a while my neighbor steve says hey bob there's a sulcata walking the fence line so he looks out for me too which is good it is it's non-stop how many animals do you reckon you have here uh i'm thinking about 300 plus okay 300 animals yeah. or sulcatas uh sulcatas only Last week there was probably six thousand here when there was babies. Oh my! Gosh. So and we just got rid of some overseas. But gotcha. uh, these are the big guys. These are Sudanese. Yeah. So there are locales that you're finding, and that the yeah. Sudanese ones seem to be the largest. Now in the Sudan, you're not seeing too many sulcatas anymore. Is that true? That's what the terrible. And these guys have much more of a dome shell. Uh, than some of the, certainly for mine, but they just get a larger size. I mean, they just really do get, they're true giants. They are. You, you've had some about 250 pounds? Uh, I think they're close to 300 now. Gosh. Let me look in here. Yeah, I don't sure. know if they're in there or not. Okay, so you do have these heated shelters. Yeah. Because is this a mesquite tree? Mesquite. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, these have thorns, have thorns on Everything them. Has Go ahead, man. I'm, I'm a, I don't mind there taking it. We'll, uh, this is nice. Is this a newer? Uh, uh, no, it's been. It was here when you guys was came. It? Uh, no, nothing's in there. So no a lot of poop now. But hey, take a look at this, everyone. You, I mean, look at the size of this shed for his sulcatas. Okay. Nice, beautiful cement floor. Access door for him. Um, in the corners. Heaters in the corners. They can move to and away from the heaters as they need. Because you will get down to freezing here, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's about two weeks to get down below freezing actually yeah. it's gotten down to 17 degrees let me ask you this what are you doing you know i, I was telling you how i do wheel um my sulcatas into the sheds uh because we'll get you know the odd fr uh, freeze what are you doing man i mean okay so in the past we used to have barns that were just on wood and we we herd them in there sometimes they weren't as big as this then but um we found out that they would stay in the burrows and what we do is we take hay and we pack block the burrow. We block the burrow and then we'll throw a block in front of it. So they can't push it out. They can't push it out. One of the things that has happened, it's if we get a rain in the wintertime, it's a cold rain um, and the moon is full. And when the clouds pull off, the sulcatas think it's the sun coming out. 
Hence, that's why we have to throw a block in front of the burrow because they'll come out thinking they can sun and it'll be freezing temps. And one year we lost about six of them. Wow. And that was after we put them in the burrow and stuffed it, but we didn't throw a block in front of it, so. <laughs> Look at this. Is this incredible? The, the, I mean, the other bigger one is oh, here. This oh one gosh. actually goes across the road. Look at this. Road. This one is going across the road. Yeah, if you get in there, this collapsed. This, this actually, the entrance was out here. What? But I wish we had a flashlight. We could actually get in there. Well, I actually got, I actually have my flashlight on my I, cell phone. I think it goes out to that spigot right there. What? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Let's those, see. It goes pretty deep this in is there. sketchy, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold on. I don't want that dirt falling in here, but. I don't mind getting dirty. I just don't want to get suffocated, actually. The only but, way I can tell is at night I use a floodlight, like a handheld. Oh, look at and this is a female here. She's yeah. going to. I'm going to go in. Maybe we'll find an interesting animal down here besides. <laughs> Holy. This is incredible, man. Does it go way back there still? It goes back, but it's like a room. It's like a cavern. They've, they've made it a really nice room. So these guys will come in here and the temperature is once you block it off you can kind of maintain it yeah i think it stays in the 60s because once you get below a certain depth it's a constant temperature yeah. i very very rarely do i have problems with runny noses every occasionally right but i'll tell you how smart sulcatas are is when i use the hay in front of the burrows sometimes you can't get these big guys in so they'll be in the corner over there right and i'll, I'll just cover them completely with hay You'll cover the tortoises with hay. Okay. With about six inches. And believe it or not, they will survive even freezing temps. But when that hay gets warm, I mean, when the hay gets wet, it starts decomposing and it gets like. Creates a, heat. They will sit on that hay and you cannot get them in the barn. You can't get them back here. I mean, the tractor now I have, I can lift them up. So we just cover them again with massive right. amounts of hay. Right. And huh. as soon as the sun peaks out, they're out mo moving and eating. See, now, guys, the thing to remember though, is the environment that Bob lives in. I could never do that in Florida because we get too much rain. So, you know, if it's dry here, yeah, that will work, yeah. you know? And if it does get wet on the inside of that mound, it's almost like a, an alligator nest, to be honest. You yeah. know, that's why gators build up their nests in these mounds. It generates heat from the act of decomposition. Right. But, um, you know, you don't think you can do that necessarily if you live somewhere else. Uh, these are just little tips and tricks that he's learned living down here in, uh, in the Phoenix area. But this is like a duplex down here, man. Like yeah. that's, that's, there's it's. Tw there's 20 tortoises in here. Do you think, now it's interesting, I wonder if they would do that, you know, in the wild. It would be interesting to know if they've ever shared burrows in the wild. That's something I couldn't tell you, yeah. but I'm, I'm thinking they probably, there's a home range, just like anything else, mm -hmm. where male probably covers a big area and the right. females are probably in there. Gotcha. I think, like, a lot of times when I get these tortoises given to me, it's this time of year because the males are super active at their uh, people's houses and they are ramming everything and just, they're looking for females. Right. And they get frustrated and, yep, and they're breaking through. They're breaking through. They're hitting people in the ankles, uh, knocking them down. This last male I got from this lady, she's 81 years old. She lived in Castle Grand, about 50 miles. And she says, I don't know what's going on with him. You know, he's hitting me. I'm, I'm worried about breaking my hip. <laughs> and he, the tortoise is only about this big. Never been with another tortoise. And so he's in a pen right now. And he's just getting a hell beat out of him right oh, now because... God. He's picking fights with males that are too big. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, man. And sometimes so. they'll learn. But, I mean, these are the largest males I've ever seen. You know, you're talking they're pushing close to 300. Here's a big guy right here. Look at this. I think there's the biggest one is right there against the wall there, too. Okay, we'll, we'll head on over to him. Yeah. But look at this. They're, they're I mean, just now coming out. I, the, to me, there really isn't anything, you know, as far as tortoises. Sulcatas are very impressive, man. You know, oh, just see he this one I'm gonna have to take to the vet. You see the flies? I do. And that so means they were fighting, so and we got a wound. We got a wound. And this yeah. is this is what happens, guys. This is the reality of keeping animals is you know you're going to uh, you're gonna have injuries and you're also the good thing that you do this all the time. You're always out walking around yep. to take a look at the animals. Um, so man, how do you need a hand trying to get this guy out? I don't think I'm going to be able to, but he has a wound on him because as soon as I seen the flies, yep. I can... And you could tell how he was yep. favoring that leg. Oh, yeah. He's got a bloody wound on him. That's why so breeding season, are... you know, 
the breeding season here, um, even in my home, it, it can be violent. I have three males and eight females. You can imagine it's a little bit different. Now, each one of these enclosures is nicely balanced. It's not like it, they're overpopulated at all. But the reality is, is that these, these guys will combat. So Bob's been doing, how many years you've been at this, Bob? Uh, since 89. 89 with Soul Cottage. So this is not something he hasn't seen before. So we're just gonna have so to. So this one will probably out. have to be dug out. Okay. Let's dug out with your um, the back hole, unless I can catch him out. Right. Once I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna put a put a pumpkin out here. Maybe he'll come back Let's out. Let's do it. Maybe we can get him because he's gonna have to go to the vet. And see what happens is they make a wound and it's bloody, and the flies will get in there and lay eggs yep. and, and the maggots, and they'll actually be feasting on his flesh. And if you catch it early enough. You can get it cleaned up. It I've, I've, I've had them. that happen a couple of times too yeah. with some females. The males get a little aggressive, even with the females, and they'll put a hole in them. Now, the, there's a couple of things. If the hole is in the middle of their shoulder, you can, you can it. fix it. Yeah. Problem is, sometimes they'll get their gruelers and separate the skin from the shell. That's a bad and That's really bad because yep. it's hard to reattach. Uh, Sam Pascucci, a good buddy of mine, and I know you know Sam, yes. was actually able to. He, Fix the animal, he had to go through the shell to reattach the skin and it worked. But that is not something yeah. that you can do easily, you know? I mean, you gosh. Get at himself. I think he told me that story yeah. when I was down there. It's man. crazy, man. So is this your biggest guy? Yeah. I Look, so. that's a beautiful animal, my God. I want to see if I can get the... You notice though, he's got an overgrown beak when I yep. got him. And it's almost impossible to figure out how to trim that. Because you can't, you can't, he won't let you around him. No, and I don't know why, because only these horses that I got get that, the rest of them never get that. That's crazy. So, so they'll get that bottom protrusion. I bet you it breaks off every once in a while, too, though. I, I, I managed to trim one down one time. You know, those, yeah, another thing you can use, you get a farrier here, a horse farrier, guy who does horseshoes, yeah. and they have those big clips. Yeah, you can literally just get on crack. You know, I mean, it sounds mean, guys. No, but, but it's, you got to do it. Yeah, I did a pair of lineman's pliers, and it was hard. Yeah, I got in there right when he was eating something, and I snapped it off. Yep. But it, it was it took a lot of muscle to do that too. Oh my gosh, man, so that's a good one out. Yeah, let's see. We'll hang back and just see if uh, the guy's still eating. <laughs> And this is, this is why there's so many people from all over the uh, country coming in right now for the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group. These guys are from Sweden. Um, and Bob's place is filled with so many really cool species that a lot of the European guys don't get to see all the time. So they're over here hanging out. The other cool thing about Bob's place is you'll see Gila monsters and rattlesnakes sometimes in the enclosures. So it's a, it's a lot of fun to be here right now. All right, guys, so this is what's going on. Bob was worried about that sulcata and we're gonna use the backhoe. We're gonna dig it out and try and get it out so we can get it to a bed and have it looked at. Um, so this is, you know, you were saying you hate to dig out burrows during the winter, but this animal obviously has got to be tended to. Oh yeah. wait, wait, it's moving, it's moving. Hold Maybe on. Maybe it'll come back. Let's now. hold on. Let's see if it, Boy, it's it looking great. at food. It's looking at food. Out of here. Yeah. So if the food, if the food situation doesn't work with the pumpkin because he's just starting to come back out, then maybe, you know, then we'll have to go with the uh, backhoe. But, um, <clears throat> you know, again, this is what it's about, guys. I mean, okay. you have animals, animals get injured, they need to be attended to. He was not enjoying the rest of his talk. He's like, man, I really want to get this animal out and have it looked at. And so I think it's important and it's really cool that Bob wants to show us just what it is entailed to care for these animals, you know? It's not just, hey, let's put animals in a, in a pen and hope for the best. Yeah, unfortunately, like you're saying, sulcados are very aggressive during the mating season and they will fight with each other and a lot of times the bigger males have bigger gruelers. And it's like you said, if they get them under that spot where the skin attaches to the shell, then you get a gaping wound in there. Yeah, I've, I lost a large 150 pound male from a 90 pound male he pulled it away. I was in Australia when I came home. My dad's like, that one hasn't moved. And it was Zeus. And I may have shown you guys the shell of Zeus. Um, but what had happened was I could look in and see his lungs. You could look right into the body and you can just see. Sometimes you see him bubbling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately it does happen. That's what people don't understand. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's expensive to, if you, I think we caught him 
early enough, I'm hoping, because he's active. A lot yep. of times I don't see him, they'll stay in the burrows. So, you know, you can walk around all the pens, but if you see a tortoise just sitting in a burrow, you don't, unless you see flies like we just right. seen. Me, immediately I see now, I'm like, oh great, we got a wound here. Yeah. So, it, if you don't see the flies going in a burrow, they could be in there already and laid eggs. Right. You won't know there's a problem. Right. And by the time you do figure it out, they might come out and lay on a hill and you'll see them non-active and maybe like a blood spot. Yeah. And it's well, too late. Yeah, it's it's a 50-50 recovery. Well, with um, you know, they are tough animals, sulcatus. They, they will heal, yeah. Right. So as long as you can get them, like he said early on, the, the, the prognosis is good. I'm not afraid to get dirty here with you, buddy. I got to see. I want to try to get behind him, so I might start digging. There's another one. There's actually another one, I think. In there? That's, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I'm going to try to get behind him where he can't get deep in the burrow. Okay. I'm gonna have to take the dirt out and but Let's there's another it. tortoise behind him that's good yeah there's one two there's a tortoise right here but okay. if you come right here because he won't be able to push past that this is a, a very useful tool when you're dealing with tortoises that are I'd love to get one Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but with my big galops and uh, sulcata stuff, tap on the back of the shell with that. Just keep tapping. Like it's a yeah, I shit. use that to him, but yeah. Just do that and go he's going to go, he's gonna go down deeper. Yeah. Well, you know what? Get that behind him. Let me, I'll tap him with something else. Well, you, is the, the idea here to just make him as uncomfortable as possible to get him out? Yeah, or just dig him out. When they're big like that, you don't have much choice you're not gonna pull them out of the hole, so you're either gonna have to dig them out or you're gonna have to catch them on top. And then what you have to do is you gotta jump behind them and try to flip them over so they don't go sliding back down in the hole. Cause sulcatas <laughs> have this, in a while what they do is they just throw their back feet out and they just slide right back down in the hole in seconds. The, I don't, jo the joys of tortoise keeping. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got that board behind them? Let me yeah. see if I can, let me see if I can just annoy them way I'm out of it you know yeah this is what I do to get my go off oh yeah I have to get him in a barn the same way yeah people think it's really terrible to do that no this is you gotta I, get him moving that's the only way because they need to understand they need to go back in a barn or something yeah. when it's cold and it's not terrible at all this is for the animal's own good and the other thing is this is how they communicate to each other when there's a tortoise behind him another tortoise just it's knocks random. at the back door yeah. And you just have to have more resilience than the tortoise, because eventually he's going to get annoyed and walk out. And this is just a PVC pipe. It's no big deal. It's not hurting him, trust me. But, but I, I usually have a piece of metal. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah, I use that like a piece of metal with a soft end on it. Yep. Oh yeah, I see that female is going around. So that hole must be a lot bigger than... I think it is, but at least he's not... Yeah, come on, buddy. Once they put those back feet in, yeah, it's I know, over. But if I can get in here and like, like an anchor. Where's he at? Let me see. I'm gonna get in here. I just hope there's no rattlesnakes living back in here. Yeah, I was looking myself. All right, buddy. I'm gonna push. So wait, you're pushing with your legs right now, Ken? Yes. Get his head turned. I'll work. Hold on, mate. I got a bad foot, but if I could just get... All right. This looks like some odd birth canal scene oh. right here. <laughs> Listen to this. This is not funny right now. We are miserable. <laughs> You know, just drop that board and I gotta dig him out. You gonna go for it? Yeah. He's not gonna go. He's not no back legs. 
thinks I'll cut his arm tough. Wobbling him and he got him broke loose for a second. And he just locked himself in there. <sighs> I'm just gonna dig that out a little deeper where you're at. Sulcatas are wonderful. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. We, I don't want them to move. Now, before any of you out there begin complaining about the things you are about to see, just know that Sulcatas can handle everything we're doing here. And obviously, this is the only way to get this beautiful creature the help that it desperately needs. People would say, that's cruel. Oh, oh no, it's not. <laughs> it's not cruel, it's necessary. It's got to get them out. I don't know what you can do. What I try to do is flip them upside down. Yep, just roll them out. Yep, roll them out. Put your fingers too. These guys will break knuckles like nothing. Now, now we can lift them like out. Like flick them, flip them up, and then up out. Um, what do you think? I think just walk them out, and then I can get them on the lift. We can get them out of here. And Jeez Louise, man! Grab right there on these. Oh, no. Yeah. That way you won't get your finger. <sighs> you yeah. first. How much do you think that guy weighs? He's a lot. I'll just lay him down a second. He's a lot, dude. Yeah, he's got it's... bad wound on him. Does he? Yeah. Well, it's good. a lot of blood. Okay. Well, the good news is it might be fresher than we thought, too, then. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at the maggots. Yeah, so you can see right here. It's unfortunately, it's a bummer because that looks like that's where the skin attaches to the shell. Yep. But the good news is I'm not seeing a total hole. So it's wounded, but it's not completely, it's not completely uh, pierced through into the body cavity. So once we get it cleaned up, we'll be able to see a lot more. And he may get lucky and just be able to isolate this animal, keep him in a clean area, and then put a bunch of what's called silvodine cream on that. But there's where it is. You can see, look at this. So that is still, we caught the wound actually within the, about a day. It takes about a day and a half a day for those maggots to be there. This is a common occurrence in their mating season that males will do this. And oftentimes they'll do it to females too. It's always the male inflicting the damage to each other usually right. but so and this is the time of year you really have to watch and I kind of look for the flies that tips off everything yep. if there's flies hanging around the front of them there's a wound because you can't see that gotcha if they're if they're sitting you know the way they're supposed to that's underneath the shell yeah so you can't look you up can't and see, see it. it you can't see it unless you really get down in there all right so what we're gonna do is irrigate it we're gonna see just how extensive and how deep it goes yeah Yeah. I'm glad we got it before the maggots got too big. Does it go all the way through? Can um, you feel? No, it looks like it stopped. No, I still there's a membrane there, but I can't tell what's behind the legs yet. That's the part that's gotta worry about. It's right there, right up in there. Well it looks here, it's, let's trickle it out. The maggots aren't very big. They no, they're small, not. So that means that's a good sign we caught it early enough. And just flush everything out, yeah, yeah. including its head. See the flies even buzzing around them now? Yep. And smell the blood. So you guys can see just how separated it is, but there's still a septum underneath that, the inner layer of his yeah. skin. So... I don't feel like I can... Yeah, they busted it off right there where it was attached. Yeah, but that, that can scab up. It'll yeah. take months. Oh, yeah, there's still some down here too. Is there? And uh, you might have a wound back behind the leg here. What I'm gonna do is uh, 
probably just move him into the shop and get one of the stock tanks and put him in there That's temporarily. Good. We want to keep him from moving and yeah. keep him dark. All right, guys, so there you have, uh, we got obviously, you can't go all the way to the end with this story because there's a lot that has to happen. He's gonna call one of his vets to take a look at this animal. But you see just how labor intensive sulcatus can be, especially if you have a group of them, and um, what it takes to keep these animals happy and healthy. So uh, we're gonna sign off now, but there's so much more that we'll be doing over here at Bob's house. We gotta tend to the wounded. Yeah. We'll talk to you guys later on. A lot of dry blood in other places.